Yes, look, I wish to take note of the annual report of the Workplace Gender Equality Agency. The Workplace Gender Equality Agency's vision is for women and men to be equally represented, valued and rewarded in the workplace, which is of great relevance and note given the wave of allegations about sexual harassment in Australian workplaces that we're currently in the throes of. Women cannot be equally valued and rewarded if they feel under threat of and at risk of sexual harassment. The Workplace Gender Equality Agency oversees the reporting of non-public sector employers with over 100 staff on how their progress with gender equality is going through reporting on six gender equality indicators. And the results of this annual survey were recently released and showed some positive trends, but overall reflected some significant gender inequalities. In particular, women were much more likely to be in part-time or casual work. There's still a big pay gap, but some progress being made, with, with men still out-earning women by more than $26,000 a year on average, with the biggest pay gap in the trade sector, with a pay gap of 26.7 per cent. We're making some progress with regard to flexible working arrangements, but there's still considerable room for improvement when it comes to access to paid parental leave and recognition of the need to ensure that women and men can, can, can fulfil caring respons responsibilities. And our workplaces remain highly gender segregated, both in roles where 74 per cent of the clerical and admin roles are women, whereas only 12.4 per cent of technicians and trades employees are women, and in the industries. Women make up 70 per cent of jobs in healthcare and social assistance organisations, but only 12 per cent in construction organisations. But where we are making only extremely slow progress relates to where power lies in organisations. Only 16 per cent of CEOs are women. Overall, female managers are only 38 per cent of managers, and there's been very little change in the gender balance of boardrooms. Only 25 per cent of board members are women. And as Libby Lyons, the director of the agency, said in her forward to the 2017 Gender Equality Scorecard, men still dominate the faces around these top tables, and the data suggests boards are not engaging with gender equality issues. As the guardians of organisational strategy, boards must step up if we are to continue building momentum for change. And this is what matters when it comes to addressing issues of sexual harassment and discrimination, which is one of the six indicators that the agency has set up. And although we've got more employee, employers having a formal policy or strategy to support employees who are experiencing family or domestic violence, the only measure that's being reported on in, that's related to workplace-based sexual harassment is whether the workplace has a gender equality strategy or policy. Over 70 per cent of organisations do, yet we are clearly only now at the beginning of an avalanche of women reporting sexual harassment in the workplace. Clearly we need to do a lot more than just having a policy relating to, gen to sexual harassment. In the Me Too hashtag and its torrent of stories, the, uh, the exposure of alleged harassment and abuse of women by the likes of Harvey Weinstein and Don Burke have hit us all like a tsunami. And it's clear these public stories are only the tip of the iceberg. Much more needs to be done to change the culture in workplaces. A world without violence against women is possible. But achieving it requires us all to play our part. And in particular, we have to acknowledge that the breeding ground for this violence is gender inequality and power imbalance and men abusing this power.